This is part one of a three-part tutorial on how to use the Blackmagic Design capture cards, namely the Shuttle and the Intensity Pro. The Shuttle is the external version of the Intensity Pro and they both do pretty much exactly the same thing. The only difference is that the Intensity Shuttle requires USB 3.0 and to see if you have 3.0 look for a blue K, uh, K, look for a blue USB port on your computer, on your computer case, the back of your motherboard, wherever. And you also need a motherboard with an X58 chipset or better. To figure out what kind of chipset you have, you're going to need to call up the people that made your computer, or look at your computer specifications, or some other way. I can't really tell you what you have. So inside the Blackmagic Intensity Shuttle box comes a shuttle itself, and the cable, and some installation CDs, but I would just get those off the internet. Now for something just to get out of the way, this will not work on an iMac, and this will not work on a laptop. Neither will this one. And this is the internal version, by the way. For the computer requirements that you need, the system requirements, if you can run modern games like, say, Battlefield by Company 2 or Crisis, if you can run those on high or medium, then you should be good. So when you're ready to set up your shuttle, You'll need to first locate the ports on the shuttle, which is not that hard to figure out. And right here, these are the inputs and it labels them. All the ones that say in, that is these, uh, the ports that say in are where the cable from your console will go. And the different ports are the HDMI right there, component, which are those three, S-Video, composite, and audio. Now the S-Video and the composite, those are standard definitions, so I'm not going to be talking too much about those. If you're using the Xbox, you can use HDMI input and HDMI output or component output. If, you, if you're using the PlayStation 3 or the Wii, or if you want to record from those, you need to use component input, which will be those three and those two. And you can use uh, HDMI output or component output. So when you're ready to set it up, you get your HDMI cable and plug it in to the input. And this is the cable that comes from your Xbox. If you're using the Wii or the PlayStation, you'll need the component cables. And let me sort these out. Whoops. And you will plug those in along with the... You'll plug those uh, these in exactly as you would with the HDMI. This one is just a little bit more complicated because <laughs> you need more cables. And, of course, don't forget the audio cables. Now for the outputs, the output does not matter, so you could just use one HDMI output for all of these, and that would work, or you could use component outputs if you wanted to. So say you're on a monitor and you have a PlayStation or an Xbox, or say you're on a monitor and you have a PlayStation, let's just use X, you have components, uh, and you use HDMI for your PlayStation, since you can't use HDMI on this card, then you just use component inputs and HDMI outputs. Now the reason you can't use HDMI on the Wii is obviously because it doesn't even have an HDMI signal to begin with, and the HDMI signal for the PlayStation 3 is HDCP, and HDCP basically stands for HD Copyright, that's just to save in a lot of technical blabity blab. And these cards, this one, the Shuttle and the Pro, will not and cannot capture the HDCP signal. And then of course when you do have all your cables set up, so once again all the cables from your Xbox or your PlayStation or your Wii go into the input. And all the cables that you want to go to your TV go into the output. So you will need a separate set of cables to be able to get it to work. And just to make it clear one last time, the cable that goes from your console goes into the input and then a completely separate cable goes into the output and the other end of that cable goes into your TV. This allows you to record and play at the same time without having to play off of the crappy preview screen in the software window for capturing. Also, uh, this thing needs to be on for you to be able to, for it to show up on your TV, so if you have your computer off and everything's connected to this and you expect, to, expect it to show up, it won't. You need to turn on your computer and open up the software for it to show up on your TV. Also, the shuttle, the only power it requires comes from the USB cable, 
and that's the other end that just plugs into the shuttle itself. Then of course, once your cables are all set up, you plug this into your computer, you install the drivers, and you're ready to record. So that is it for part one on how to use Intensity Shuttle. As you can see, this is incredibly easy to set up compared to the next one. And I'm just going to show you what a USB 3.0 port looks like. If my camera would focus, that would be great. I see there, and if you're wondering, yes, I got a different uh, computer case for my last computer. <laughs> that blue port right there, that's USB 3.0. That right there is 2.0. I'm going to go to the back because most of the time you're going to want to use the ports on the back because they tend to be a little bit better. And sorry, my camera is really, really crappy, so sorry if you can't see it well, but those two are 3.0, and the rest down here are 2.0. And that is where the shuttle gets plugged into. Now that's easier because you don't have to open up your computer or anything. You don't even have to turn it off to install it. You will have to restart it a couple of times, but for the most part, the shuttle is incredibly easy to set up. It is a lot like the Hapage HDPVR. The only difference is that you need to have a pretty modern system to be able to use it. So that is it for part one. Thanks for watching. The next part will be how to use the Intensity Pro. If you cannot, if you uh, already bought this card and you know how to use it, skip ahead to part three to install the drivers.